Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, volcanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative paint in watercolor, thin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. This is Clyde JKL, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast. This is episode 23, November the 25th, the week of Thanksgiving. We don't have a whole lot to discuss. Uh, we're just going to maybe chatter a little bit about uh, our past Thanksgiving experiences and uh, share some uh, Thanksgiving stories. I'm here with Constance Bronson and, I, and, and Diane Hunt. Hello, Constance. Hello, Diane. Hi, everyone. Hello, Clyde. Hello, Diane. Hey, everybody. We're glad to have Constance back with us. Now, Constance may uh, drop in and out. She's been having a little bit of technical difficulties here, but uh, still good to have her back with the, with the group since we missed her last week. And before we get started sharing our Thanksgiving stories, Constance, I'm going to give the mic to you, and uh, you can talk about a meeting you attended uh, last week. Pretty interesting. All right, so you got it, Constance. All right. Well, I joined the uh, Alpha Rota Plain Artist Group in Tulsa, and um, they, I guess, the quarterly meeting. So I went, and it was it was really nice. I got to meet a lot of people in the from the area, art, other artists. And, um, it was just a nice get together. They had a program on pastel painting, so I learned some other new tricks that I haven't tried yet for paper paper uh things you can do to the paper and different kinds of sticks you can use and just all the different papers and underpaintings and things like that you can do to uh, the pastel hmm. painting before you get started okay but that was really interesting great so when's when's our next meeting well the next meeting is going to be in march so okay that will be like Diane He's said er, earlier, they they're they're pretty much they don't do much during the winter time, but uh, the spring and the, and the warm weather comes about when they uh, probably get active. This is a plain air organization, right? Yes, it is in Tulsa. Okay. So. Fantastic. So Diane, you want to start off with some kind of a Thanksgiving story? Something uh, your your favorite maybe. Maybe your favorite memories of Thanksgiving, something from childhood or recently or? Well, when I was a kid, we always used to go up to New York because my, both my parents were from New York. So we'd go up there for our holidays mostly. And um, all the cousins and stuff, would we'd all be there. So, so, But all the kids, we had our own table in the kitchen. We, of course, we, they, we couldn't fit all the people on the, at the dining room table. So all of the kids had their own table in the kitchen. (laughs) (laughs) So we could, you know, goof off and have a good time. 
and the parents, you know, all the adults would be in the other room. <laughs> but afterwards, we'd all get together and do stuff that, you know, I, yeah, we really enjoyed that. Did it every year. So you said you're up in New York. Did you did you attend the uh, the what the the famous uh, Macy's parade. Thanksgiving parade? Um, I think we did it a couple times, but we weren't in the city. Um, we went to Long Island, so it wasn't real close where we were. But we always watched it on TV for sure. I still do, actually. <laughs> it's kind and, of funny. <laughs> isn't that it's, year after year after year? You know, I and the thing now is you're hoping that you see one of the balloons escape or something, you know, that's. that's, always, that's <laughs> well, when I was a kid, you'd see them where the, the air, the wind would catch them and the people would be like lifting up off the ground and stuff. I remember that. <laughs> wow. yeah. I think I, I mean, when I was there seeing it, I, you know, it happened in real life that I remember seeing that happen. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, those balloons are big. Like when you see them in person, they're huge. Well, that's why I was asking about seeing in person. Yeah, I've always thought about it on TV. They look big, but but you can't get a real good idea of them until unless. Yeah, of course, I was a kid too, so you know they seemed like totally enormous to me then. But yeah, yeah, yeah they're still pretty big. I mean, they are huge. Everyone's big <laughs> the buildings, so that's that's pretty big. Some yeah. of the buildings, you know. Yeah, you see them coming through the buildings. Yeah, you know the the. They do a pretty good job now with the fancy camera. You get a good perspective. Next, you know, take a shot next next to one of the buildings, skyscrapers, and, you know, you got this giant balloon there, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But that's something I always enjoy, watching the parade on, t- on TV now. You know, I, do, I always do that every year. <laughs> so. What channel is that on? I don't know. Um, I haven't watched it in a few years. I'd like to watch it again. It's usually on the re- the regular um, TV stations, you know, the not the. Yeah. They don't all do New York. Some of them do different cities, but. Um, yeah. The New York one's my favorite, I guess. So yeah. It's yeah. Something I've always done. That's the one's been around the longest, and now yeah, you got, yeah. Now you got other cities that are copying, you know, and it's it's still, right. it's not the same, you know. Yeah, it's not the same. <laughs> Macy's, I mean, these they there's been so many. Oh, there were so many movies from the 40s and 50s that you know uh, involved the uh, the parade in some some manner. You mm-hmm. know? From from comedies to Christmas movies to th- thrillers. I mean, so, <laughs> I forget what it was. There was some movie from 1945 or 46 or something that was a thriller. It was a murder mystery, and uh, <laughs> it involved the the uh, the killer. The police were chasing him, and he he uh, escaped into the into the parade and was in, you know, in hiding behind one of the big balloons or something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they always say Macy's the, good publicity. They always figured out how to get that year, get their name in there. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Constance, you got a, got a Thanksgiving story you want to share with us? Well, it's a pre Thanksgiving story. Um, in 1992, um, I had gotten already went to the grocery store and got already bought all the all the stuff I needed because I used to cook cook for Thanksgiving, and um, I got everything I needed to for to cook Thanksgiving. And then the next day, I went out to work and I used to drive an eighteen wheeler, and I went on one round because I drove local and went on the first round, and then I went to the second round on the way back out to Talladega. I got run off the road, and you know, I was in the in the hospital for two weeks after that. But oh, wow. it was bad, you know, because everybody else got to kick it, and I never. I was so out of it from having surgery and stuff that I hardly remember that Thanksgiving, other than it was just a really bad day. So <laughs> that happened on the twenty fourth, which was my husband Tom's birthday. So uh, oh, was, that was quite a present. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah. Okay. I said joyful Thanksgiving story, not horror stories. Memorable holiday story. So that one was pretty memorable for me. Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> wow. Well, when I was growing up, my favorite time was uh, visiting Thanksgiving, uh, visiting my grandparents. My grandmother was a great cook. And she used to have these little bowls of homemade fudge 
and peanut brittle and nuts and things sitting around, you know, the, for, for the family. And of course the kids, we weren't before dinner, we were not allowed to have any of the fudge or the candy, but <laughs> obviously, you know, we'd sneak. My grandfather was terrible because he would, he, he would on um, purposely to get my grandmother mad. He would encourage me to, hey, it's been quite fun. <laughs> Grandma won't see it, you know. <laughs> he, would, he would do that. Of course, she would turn around and get off. I said, "It's not me, Grandpa. It's Grandpa. He's the one. He he, he gave it to me. He told me to come and get it." <laughs> so that was always a big joke, you know. <laughs> he used to always say, to, "Yeah." Each year after, she'd always tell you, "Boys, your grandfather <laughs> offers you some candy." You say, "No, you don't take it." <laughs> and he would wink. Yeah. Listen to your grandma, boys, and he'd always wink at <laughs> <you know? laughs> But we'd have, you know, my uncles and aunts and, you know, then my cut some of my cousins, you know, uh, when, uh, of course, they were still real, real little, you know. <laughs> they, you know, they were still babies, you know, toddlers, you know, as were my brothers and I, we were, you know, a little bit older. We were not that much older, though. But that was, that was always a, uh, a fond memory we also one year uh before thanksgiving um uh, i think i told this story to you guys before about the turkeys there was a turkey farm uh down the road about a couple miles away that raised turkeys and somebody either opened the gate or whatever but anyhow all those turkeys <laughs> flooded my grandparents yard <laughs> my brothers and I, boy, that was fun. We wanted to go out, you know, but those turkeys were mean because yeah. they, they they chased my little brother. One of them got him by the by his britches, by his bottom. <laughs> yeah, on his my br other brother and I, we were inside the house looking out the window, laughing, you know. And he's he's being chased all around the yard by, by those turkeys. So, so oh, poor kid. <laughs> Yeah, fond, fond memories of, uh, you know, Thanksgiving. It was always something for, you know, family, you know, get together. And uh, my grandmother used to make, have you guys ever heard of minced meat pie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my grandmother used to make that. And my grandfather, she only made one pie because my grandfather was the only one that liked it. No one else liked it except me. <laughs> I liked it. So me and my grandfather, we had a pie to ourselves. And it used to be an argument over who was going to eat the last piece, you know. <laughs> you know what is a mince meat anyway? <laughs> what? What is a mince meat anyway? Well, the original, I don't, I can't remember if my grandmother made the original or not. Because it was always real sweet when I had it. I remember it had lots of raisins, had raisins and, 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 uh, uh, I think there were yeah, some, lots of different kinds of fruit. Yeah, I think there was some apple in there, maybe some cherries, you know, in it. But then the original was also, it was made with actual meat. It was made with this especially sauteed meat. I mean, that's why I looked up on the internet. That was the original, the English version. I don't remember. I don't think, I think she made the original because all I remember is, is all kinds of fruit and everything. The closest thing we have down here in Oklahoma to mincemeat pie, it tastes almost, it looks and it tastes almost the same. It's not quite though. Is a pecan pie? Now that is very seems to be very popular around here. I see it in stores, you know. And I yeah. one, one year I bought one, and it it tastes almost. It's a sweet. It's, it's really sweet, you know. <laughs> from what I remember of minced meat pie, you know, being, but uh, it's not minced meat pie, you know. It's it. <laughs> yeah, I grew up on pecan pie because, uh, you know, being from the south. That's a, that's a really popular pie. Yeah. Yeah, they have around here. And and uh, now another pie, it's interesting. I didn't like it when I was a kid, but a, another another type of pie that I've grown, gone fond, uh, I've grown fond of is uh, a sweet potato pie. Mm -hmm. It's actually, yeah. In fact, I bought one the other day at the store, and it's already, it's a small one, but it's already gone. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> but this year i decided i don't always do this but this year i decided to fix myself a thanksgiving dinner so i bought myself one of those um uh turkeys it's a it's it's like a half a turkey it's just the breast you know 
and it's about six pounds and it's already the kind that you, you don't have to unthaw it. You just take it out of the bag and throw it in the oven and cook it for three hours and it's done. <laughs> yeah. So I got, yeah. I bought one of those and then, and I bought me, they had these frozen pumpkin pies and I reason why I did that because if I buy that pumpkin pie, a fresh one, <laughs> It'll be gone before Thanksgiving. It'll be gone before Thanksgiving, yeah. Yeah, it won't, it won't last to Thanksgiving. As to what happened to the sweet potato pie, you know, I knew I knew it was going to go, yeah. So, but the frozen pie, I, I thought that uh, you just take it out and let it thaw, but I was reading on the back of the box, no, I got to bake this thing. I got to bake mm -hmm. it in the oven for an hour and a half, you know. And That's I was not like, bad. I said, that's going to be an even better, because I bought some Cool Whip, you know, that's going to be an even better deal. Hot <laughs> pumpkin pie, you know, like, fresh, <laughs> you know, that's going to be. So I'm looking forward to, on Thanksgiving, you know, making my own little little Thanksgiving fixing, you know, I guess some stuffing, you know, and everything. Make your house smell good. That's right. It always, it always does. In fact, it about drives me crazy, because I always, when it's almost done, you know, I start smelling real good, and I can hardly wait, you know, to... <laughs> That was, mm -hmm. the, that was the thing when I was growing up in my own home, my mother and then my grandparents, you know, and uh, um, was the food. Oh, I was just being cooked and prepared, you know, it just like anti an anticipation, you know, builds. <laughs> <laughs> it was also a Thanksgiving, uh, it was a Thanksgiving event. It was the last time I saw my grandfather before he passed away. Uh, two years after I moved down here in Oklahoma, I went back to Indiana for Thanksgiving at my mother's house. And uh, my uh, grandfather, you know, came over, was invited, you know, came over. And that was the last time because then he, you know, he, I, I got a chance to see him, you know, talk to him before he passed away. And uh, so I was very thankful for that. Yeah, and everything. Speaking yeah. of thanks, Thanksgiving, um, have we, uh, what, what, are we, what are we thankful for? For this year 2019 has been a fantastic art year for us for our careers right yeah got anything in particular do, that you're thankful for i'm just thankful for my studio i enjoy it out here so Thank, thankful say that again because you broke up uh thankful for my studio because i i really enjoy it out here in the studio i spend a lot out here so you just got that you, you got that started just this year, right? Then or got it opened up. This is this is I guess going on about two and a half years that the studio has been all set up. So and I've rearranged things a couple of times trying to get it the way I want it. But it's working out and I really enjoy it out here. What about what about you, Diane? Anything in particular? Or? Um Nothing in particular. I'm I'm pretty thankful about everything most of the time. So, yeah. but um, I know. Yeah, I've had more time to work on my art business. I guess this year, so I'm thankful for that. So are you are you? But, yeah, like last week we talked about you know successes. So you still, so you're you're feeling that your your career is you know feeling a success, feeling an achievement in your in your career or. Yeah, it's getting there. <laughs> it's always an it's always an effort, but <laughs> I can see more um, progress being made as far as my biz the business side of it, I guess. So that's um, a real positive step forward. Okay. So, well, what about thing, you? <laughs> well, one thing in particular that I am very very thankful is that you two keep me company each Monday. I am very thankful for your friendship. <laughs> And for your uh, your your companionship in a way, you know, we meet virtually, you know, online, and we keep in contact via email, encouraging each other. And I would not have achieved my current success in my career without you two. I really am thankful for that. Uh, you guys, uh, I know for a fact that that class that we took way back. God, it's going on two years now since we was in that class, believe, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, I would have, you know, you get all jazzed up and excited and enthused. And then you don't, you know, because we well, was a 10-week long class. We met every week, you know, and well, I look forward to it every Monday. And I was all excited. And I knew I, in my mind that afterwards I would have 
I, I would have dropped, you know, dropped off. But then we continued having these meetings and we continued meeting. Of course, we had a lot more of us and, you know, some of them have dropped off. But uh, you two stayed with it and uh, I, I appreciate it. Now we're, now we're doing, we're recording this podcast, you know, sharing our thoughts and our uh, achievements and uh, successes and failures and whatnot, you know, with the world. And that's, it's, uh, it's icing on the cake as far as I'm concerned, you know, and, mm-hmm. and so, from what I've been looking at the numbers, we're not boring a lot of people, maybe some people, <laughs> <laughs> people that are enthused with art and are interested in, you know, and, in, in art, uh, keep listening. So, uh, that's another thank you, folks. Thank you so much, folks, for uh, tuning in each week and listen, yeah. listening to us chatter. And uh, if you haven't figured it out by now, we're not professionals. We may sound professional because every time I listen to the podcast after, I say, God, you guys sound so good. We're not that good. Believe me, folks. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I think we've improved. Uh, I think we've all improved a lot. We've gotten more comfortable speaking, you know, on are you a recording <laughs> instead yes. of just amongst ourselves. And um, I think we've made um, strides forward in our career. All of us have made strides in our careers and had more um, just ha- talking to each other and and helping each other and giving each other ideas on how to do things. And I think it's helped all of us. And I think that's really important for any artist because we're, we are pretty isolated. You know, we work in our studios most of the time by ourselves. And um, I don't know, you know, we don't always take the time or go out as much as we probably sh- should or could, you know, cause we're mostly working on our craft or whatever. So it's yeah. like, it's really difficult to do that sometimes. So it yeah. is nice to have um, people you can bounce ideas off of and, and you keep can, you motivated yeah. and things. It's yeah. really important. We, we, we talk, we talk the same language, you know, we're talking, you know, with, with the art and everything. And uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, outside people don't quite understand, you know, they <laughs> are, well, why are you getting so excited about that? I just got this new paintbrush. This is so great. Yeah. <laughs> What is wrong with you? Remember <laughs> how when I when I bought when I first bought the M Graham uh, watercolors? Of course, I don't know. We weren't recording the podcast then, but remember how excited you two were laughing at me? I was like a little yeah. kid, so excited. But it was only because we could relate. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it, it had had we been recording then and, and record and I recorded that enthusiasm. People would have said, "What is wrong with him?" Yeah, it's just. <laughs> And it's expensive paint too, you know. Why you get all excited these little tiny tubes, you know? <laughs> you know? But, uh, but yeah. So, it, and yes, maybe we, maybe I shouldn't sell it short. We have improved. You know, you're right. We are getting more comfortable with uh, speaking. And I remember vividly when I would say, "Okay, we're going to record," and we just kind of everybody freeze up. Yeah, freeze up. <laughs> You know, and I, yeah. just be all excited and talk, talking and constantly be telling jokes and whatnot. And then I said, okay, I'm going to record. And then, uh, what do you do? You got to talk. Remember, I think I actually said that a couple of times, didn't I? I said, hey, you got, you got to talk. You got to. <laughs> yeah, but I think also we've, we've set goals. We've, I mean, I don't, we haven't been doing that as much lately, but we had yeah. um, set goals and we still, we still do touch base on some of that stuff. And, like you're talking about LinkedIn lately and trying yeah. to, you know, keep up with all the social media stuff that we have to do. And it, there is a lot of things that you, you know, have to do and you, you have a tendency to put it on the back burner because you don't, <laughs> you really don't want to be doing that. You want to yeah. rather be painting or whatever. Yeah. And so, so hold each other accountable. Yeah. We don't, yeah. Hold each other accountable to some of that. It, it helps a lot. Yeah. And we're not, and we don't do it in a cruel manner, you know? No. We, you know, and that's for, you know, hey, if you can, you know, if you can accomplish a task, okay, fine. If you can't, well, you know, life happens, you know. Yeah, but you're voicing that intention and you're making, you know, an effort to uh, to put into words or to, into writing what things you need to do to make your um, business improve. And when you actually can check off some of those things and see, you know, your progress, it really does make a difference. Yeah. It gives you more, um, incentive. 
incentive to continue doing it and, and you can see things happening. Yeah. So that's, that's been really helpful. Absolutely. And, well, and that's like my, you know, uh, you know, recently I've been talking about entering, you know, art contests and everything. And, and I actually, I did a, I, I think I created a blog post kind of explain a little bit. The, the, the purpose of that is it's not to, to uh, gain attention from our art. That's not the primary source. I, I followed the, you know, Stephen Bauman's recommendation. What, what hit with me was, was it's a way to improve your art and your skill because you look, you look at the other contestants, you look at the other entries, and at first you can get depressed because it's oh my god, those people are so good, I'm not <laughs> even close to it. But then you sit down in yourself in your mind, you work on a piece specifically for that particular contest that you're going to enter, and that psychologically it helps you it helps you improve it gives you you know a, a, a that you you've got more of a purpose you know for for uh, creating that particular piece of art and if you win something that's icing on a cake you know mm-hmm. that, that's just icing mm-hmm. on a cake and and so and that's that was my that's my rationale for entering you know my purpose and the fact that i've won some things it just amazed me you know, you know, the special recognition at the bottom of the list, but Hey, out of 800, some other international artists, I got something, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, you know, and I printed, I got the certificates. I printed them out. I've got them framed or on the wall. I mean, Hey, <laughs> <laughs> so that, uh, yeah, it, 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 the idea of even doing that, never would have popped in my head if we hadn't been meeting weekly and I've had to, you know, to go and try to find something for us to talk about, you know? And so we talk about Seth and Bauman videos and, and I never would have came across that if we hadn't been meeting every week. So that's why when I, I'm honest, when I say I'm thankful that you guys, you know, are willing to meet with me, you know, every week. So from, from a very selfish point of view, it's helping my career. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i think it helps both, all of us you know so um maybe um i'm gonna throw throw something out here i didn't i try to let you guys know before we start the recording so i don't <laughs> embarrass you um maybe we can pick a subject for starting december any <laughs> ideas for a subject because I'm starting to run dry. <laughs> I'm trying to think that what our listeners might be interested in cause, and what we, uh, you know, would uh, would help us, inspire well, it'd us. it would be nice to get feedback from our listeners on what they might want to hear us talk about. Because um, we, you know, like, like we've talked about some terms and um, other things that maybe, you know, people that aren't artists don't understand or don't know. And we don't necessarily realize that because we're in the midst of it. So exactly. <laughs> maybe if we can get some feedback from people, well, the things that they'd like to you know, learn about or something they don't understand or, you know, some topic that they've heard that they don't really get what, what people are talking about when they say it, that would be helpful for us too. Okay. That's, yeah. Um, I'll throw it to the listeners. CJKL at sign mystery dash otr.com that's cjkl at sign the word mystery hyphen otr.com send us some feedback of things you would like to hear us subject matters that you'd like to hear us uh, talk about or if you have any uh, youtube video recommendations you would like us to uh, watch and and talk about you know, explain if you come across a video or a documentary about an artist or something you don't understand, or you want to hear more about a particular artist, let us know. CJ Kale at sign mystery dash OTR dot com. I think I said it enough. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's good, Diane. That, yeah, that would be really helpful, you know, because it might uh, open us up to something that, you know, to give us a learning opportunity also. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a lot of things about art too that, I mean, I went to art college and I don't remember some stuff. So like, I know it's like in the back of my head somewhere <laughs> and, it, and to be reminded of things, it's like, it brings it back 
out for me and to talk about it, it, it clarifies it again for me. So, and you know, I know. Sure I you remember guys are the same way. Like the, the first time you know? a couple of, what, a couple episodes back when I started uh, asking you some things there, I kind of threw it at you. You were almost freezing up. At a point. Yeah. I had to think about it. Cause some of the stuff I, I know I learned it and that's like, but, I, you know, I've been painting for so long, it's kind of automatic now or intuitive, it, and I don't think about a lot of the stuff anymore. So when I have to, you know, when I'm asked a, qu a specific question like that, I have to stop and think about it, and then it's like, oh, yeah. But, you know, it's so, yeah, listeners, not always at the front of my mind. The listeners, please, our dear listeners, please send us your, your request of things, uh, subject matters, art-related that you would uh, you'd like to hear. If you want us to talk about how we create a painting, okay, we'll be glad to do that for you. You know, I, I personally think that's boring, but hey, <laughs> if it's <interesting, laughs> uh, you know, if it's interesting to you, let's do it. Because that's what this is about. We, for us, things are obvious up front. We deal with it. We, we, you know, manipulate paints and deal with the pros and cons and difficulties and pleasure and whatnot, and don't even think about it. Like Diane said, you know. She just naturally does does things that she learned a long time ago, and uh, to a somebody who is new to art, uh, this is fascinating. So, please, we'll be glad to uh, you know share share this uh, information with you and uh, explain you know explain some things. Well, we're not experts; we're just working artists. All of us. I don't know about combined. God, I don't want to tell our ages, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> combined we probably go what 60 We're 70 years not quite as old as the dinosaurs <laughs> 70 years worth of art experience you know <laughs> all combined together <laughs> you know and, uh, so, you know so with me there's a there was a, a really active period and then i then I dropped off for 26 years and now I'm active at it again. And I'm relearning stuff that I, that I learned years ago. You know? So, yeah. You know, yeah. I think uh, Constance, you're the same way. Some of the stuff you said you haven't been doing painting for a while. Now you're redoing it. And, yeah. yeah I'm learning, learning things all over again. Plus learning new things also because 12 years ago, I didn't have access to all the YouTube stuff and things like that, that, people have access to now to, to teach themselves with so yeah, yeah. you all, you almost <laughs> don't have to enroll in a in a standard uh art course i mean there is so much out there on the internet but you but n not all information is good information so you have to what i judge uh when i watch a video of somebody demonstrating something or explaining something and then i try to do it if I'm successful at doing it, I consider that to be a good instructor because they they were able to ping or express or get across to me uh, something that I was able to immediately apply in success. And that's why I always talk about Stephen Bauman because he's, of all of them, he's the only one that's just everything that I try that he talks about. God, it works. <laughs> <laughs> I am success, you know, that's so why, hey, he's inspired me. I'm going to, like, uh, what, one episode, uh, Diane, we were, I, I think it was, no, it wasn't the last one, one before that, we were talking about uh, walnut uh, oil painting. I'm, uh, you know, that's my New Year's resolution. I'm going to, after the new year, <laughs> I'm going to get, get my hands on some uh, walnut oil paints and uh, start doing some oil painting because Stefan Bauman, that's all he talks about. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like acrylics. He doesn't like watercolors. He, you know, <laughs> he doesn't say it's bad, but he just says, if you really want to be, become a painter, you got to oil paint. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. So my, that's my motivation, you know, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to intoxicate myself. You know? <laughs> no, I've been wondering about that because I've taken the path of pastel painting and I haven't been doing much oil painting. So, but I really enjoy the pastels and, I like their velvety texture and the, you know, it's, it's not like you can't mix the paints. I mean, you can overlay them, the pastels to get different colors, but I don't know. I just really like pastels. Always have. Yeah. 
And that's what this is about because uh, you have to uh, do what they call uh, feed the artist's soul. You have to feed your soul. You have to do what, uh, you know, what, what you like, what makes you, uh, gives you satisfaction, makes yeah. that smile on your face, that twinkle in your eye, you know, whatever. And, and if somebody else likes it, boy, that's even better, right? Yeah. <laughs> The, the, well, it, you, you need to experiment with different mediums to find out what um, really works for the way you want to work and for what, you, what you're trying to do. Like, I mean, I work in different mediums, but depending on what I'm doing and where, where I want to go with it, it's like some mediums work better in some situations than other ones. And if you, if you have some experience with different things and you, you have that ability to be able to switch mediums if you find you know one doesn't work as well as something else would you yep. can switch over to something else to a different uh, medium yeah, yeah. So, absolutely and it keeps it interesting <laughs> yeah. it, it does after a while you get kind of you know i don't know about you guys but i get kind of bored you know like for a while boy i was doing my uh you know, my pulp radio art you know it was was just predominantly pen and ink and uh, brush you know, ink and boy I was excited for that and then I just kind of okay <laughs> yeah well sometimes your mind needs a challenge like you, you've yeah. you kind of work with one medium for a while and you get to know it so well and you kind of get into a rut you can get into a rut using that material and because you know you kind of do things automatically and stuff so it doesn't, it's not as much of a challenge anymore. And so it can be, it can be fun to try something new and have more of a challenge and, you know, whether it turns out or not, it's just, you know, yeah, yeah. it can be fun to do that. And it, and it expands, even if you go, like you start using like oil paint and then you switch over to pastel and you work in that for a little while. And when you go back to your oil paints, it, it brings something to it, like something different that you didn't have before. So yeah. there's things you can benefit from doing that. So uh, yeah, it's different. You know, for our listeners who are non-artists, when next time you look at a painting, maybe if you listen to enough of our podcasts, uh, you can look at uh, a, uh, a painting, a special uh, in a museum or in a gallery of uh, paintings of the masters, and you can uh, see what we're talking about. You know, see. Yeah. Uh, See, see what glazing is and see what wa a wash is and uh, see the, uh, you know, the, diff the different colors. So you may look at a painting and think there's 15 different colors, but in reality, there's probably only four or five. It's just the way the artists, uh, the masters were good at that, at uh, laying the colors on top of each other to, to, uh, to make a, uh, a new color. Okay. I think we've uh, got long enough now. We've like I said, this one was just basically chatter, Thanksgiving chatter. I want to wish all of our listeners a very, very happy Thanksgiving. And I hope you continue listening to us. And um, please, cjkl at sign mystery-otr.com. cjkl at sign mystery-otr.com. Send us some ideas. Send us some requests. Something that, that you want to hear us talk about. And, uh, Diane and Constance, both of you have a very, very happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so, so much for joining us, joining, and um, we'll see you all next week. All right. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving, Clyde, Constance, and everyone. All right. Bye-bye, folks. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constant Drostan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronzan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com 
That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.